Hello, yes. Uh, good day, everyone. Um, my name is Sir Ken from the College of Arts and Sciences Psychology uh, Department. Um, I'm a faculty at the University of Batangas. And for today, I will be discussing our um, topic or the 10th lesson for our subject, Understanding the Self, specifically Political Self. So allow me to share my screen for you to also have the visibility of our lecture um, module. Okay, so um, for today, it's about political self. Pag-aaralan natin yung um, aspect of a human self on a political perspective. As an introduction, um, human person is social in nature and in character as most philosophers comply with this universal truth. St. Thomas and Aristotle both agreed that man is, a um, is also political in nature that the state is a natural institution created like a man. So, how important politics is to a person? How important a society or a state is to a person? How important um, is having a government, having a law, having a constitution sa isang tao or group of people? So for this chapter or for this lesson, we'll be talking about different aspects of um, a political society which impacts the human self. Here are the objectives of our lesson for today. Um, at the end of this discussion, we'll be able to explore the different aspects of self and identity in relation to political concepts. Next, demonstrate critical reflective thought in integrating the various aspects of self and identity. And lastly, identify the different forces and institutions that impact the uh, development of various aspects of the self and identity. We have um, a chapter quiz um, for this lesson, and there is or there are six hours time allotment or two weeks for the completion of this lesson. And we can now start. So um, human person, just like what I've mentioned earlier, we are political in nature. So noon pa naman daw, hindi lang sa current society na meron tayo ngayon, ay meron ng politics, meron ng government. Tapos daw, pinanganak daw tayo dito na, kumbaga eh, we are born to be politically inclined. A person does not just aspire to relate to others, but wants to create a society of which he is a part of. So try to imagine a person na walang na nakatira sa isang bansang walang government. Isang tao nakatira sa sa isang bansang walang peace, walang order, walang politics, walang constitution, walang law. So try to imagine that. Ba? So it's very hard. Um on the current status, ang view, ang perception kasi ng mga tao pag sinabing politics, it's always negative eh. Kasi um, mga tao kasi ngayon parang laging nagahanap ng something without them also appreciating kung ano yung na-provide ng government. Lagi silang may hinahanap. It's, they are very ideal rather than being very realistic. Ba? So on this chapter, pag-aaral natin kung ano ba ang importansya ng ating perception on a political standpoint or political perspective. Now, it is being reiterated here that without the presence of the society, an individual is denied of his longing for oneness or unity, a yearning that drives him for a relationship with others. In connecting to a social group for a satisfaction of his needs, a person in a sense shows a political character of his life. No man is an island. You should always remember that. A person, yeah, may uh, survive physically, um, kung mag-isa lamang siya, pero I don't think that that person can grow maturely, psychologically, emotionally, more importantly, socially, kung nag-iisa lamang siya. Diba? He cannot, he cannot survive living in a world na mag-isa lamang siya. Of course, he also needs the presence, the influence, the, um, the companionship and the societal influences and connections coming from other people. That's the importance na hindi lamang dapat tayo laging nag-iisa. Ba? Political life is a required consequence of his social existence. Now, um, politics emerges kapag ito na, 
may society na. And the main, one of the main goals of having politics, <coughs> excuse me, or government, is to make sure that there should always be peace and order sa isang society. May kapayapaan at may kaayusan. And that's the reason why kung bakit meron din tayong constitution. Para may peace, may order, at maprotektahan tayo mga tao. So imagine, if we are living in a barangay na walang peace and order, or walang politics, or walang constitution, or walang law, baga lahat lang tayo nakatira sa isang area na yon. So big sabihin, allowed na magpatugtog ng malalakas na speaker kahit alauna ng umaga. Allowed na bato ng bote sa kapitbahay. Allowed na magnakaw ng mga tanim o mga halaman sa kapitbahay. Diba? Simpleng, simpleng negative scenarios lang yan. But what if in a country na walang peace and order? Huh? Allowed na magpasabog ng isang territory. Allowed na mangidnap ng mga um, um, tourists. Allowed na mga hijack ng mga galito ng mga ganyan. Diba? So that is the importance of politics. That's the importance of government. That's the importance of law. That's the importance of having peace and order. Kaya lang, hindi lang kasi na-appreciate ng mga tao ang kanilang political self kasi with the current situation that we have right now, what we are only seeking are negative without us appreciating what is positive or what are the positive things that's also happening to us that the government is providing us. Kumbaga, we are just Kung baga, napaka-tunnel vision lang natin. Eh. We're just looking on kung ano lang yung gusto nating makita. We're just looking on kung ano lang gusto nating ma-achieve. Without us realizing na, ay wait, ito yung offer, um, effort ng government sa atin. Na dapat ma-appreciate ko. Now, according to St. Thomas Aquinas, political life must follow the concept that the ruler and the rule should be able to sustain the common good. So, kailangan daw may sumusunod at may sinusunod o nagpapasunod for us to make sure that there's peace and order. Ma-achieve natin what we want to achieve. However, if there are people na, may, na leftist o makakaliwa na um, always, na wala nang ginawa kung hindi maghanap or paghanapan ang isang tao o isang ruler, na hindi pa naman technically nagago or in progress pa. Kumbaga, they are very idealistic. Kumbaga, they want a perfect government. Na technically, wala naman talagang perfect government. So, hindi natin ma-achieve ang common good. Ako, naniniwala ako na, na the, the success and the progress of a country depends on the citizens. And not purely, not purely on the leaders. It should always be in the hands of the citizens. Kasi kung nandyan ang suporta ng mga taong bayan, ay ma-achieve yung success, yung growth. But kung sisimula pa lang during election time, we are voting for those people who should not deserve to be voted, eh doon pa lang sa election, eh we are being irresponsible na. Then on, pag na-elect na sila and they did something wrong, ano, sisisigin natin sila. ba? However, if we are supporting our government with all of the endeavors or activities or the things that they are providing unto us rather than ranting, rather than um, saying something bad, pero ikaw wala ka namang ginagawa sa sarili mo, di ba? we cannot achieve itong common good na tinatawag ni uh, St. Thomas Aquinas. Now, the ruler is the government and the ruled are the people or the citizen. Okay? Now, the origins of political system. In the early um, Greek um, era or um, ages, ay may politics na. Diba? May mga leaders na, may mga ruler na, may mga emperor, tsaka may mga governor na during that time. So, hindi lang, ito konsepto ng politics and government, hindi lang to bago, kahit noon pa man. Diba, dun sa panahon pa nga ng mga sultan, ng mga raha, ng mga early Filipinos, may mga rulers na. And, nandun yung konsepto ng tinatawag na the ruler and the rule. O, kailangan yung sundin at um, kayo ang kailangan kong pasunurin. Diba? Me as a ruler and you as the people that I am leading or taking the lead. Diba? Now, 
here in the Philippines, we are live, we we have a um, democratic government, a republic democratic type of government. So ano ba yung democracy? Lagi natin naririnig to. We might have heard of this term already, but let's dig deep um, onto the definition itself. Now, democracy is the Greek word which means demos, um, meaning for people's rule. Para sa, uh, para sa tao, mula sa tao, at itong gobyerno na ito ay um, pinapamahalaan or for the people's um, ruling. Diba? Now, um, what's something good with democratic type of government is um, freedom. Freedom of speech, freedom of expression, nandiyan yung existence ng Bill of Rights, di ba? Kaya lang, sometimes, this freedom is being abused. Minsan naaabuso. Lagi sasabihin natin, maninira tayo sa ibang tao, tapos dadahilan natin ay, ay, wala, wala akong pakailan kasi may freedom of expression naman ako. Hey, wait lang. Meron nga tayo freedom of expression, but are we exercising it correctly or rightfully? Ang hindi lahat ng nakalagay sa Bill of Rights, sa Article 3 ng ating 1987 Constitution, hindi lahat doon ay um, absolute. Example, um, freedom of expression, hindi yan absolute. Ibig sabihin, hindi, hindi, tot, hindi, hindi, yan ang batas na hindi lamang, na, na walang exception to the rule. Sige, sabihin natin ng freedom of expression, pero paano na lamang kung ang pagkaka-practice mo ng, ng gusto mo express ay paniniram po rin na. Naninira ka na ng karakter ni ibang tao. So pwede kang kasuhan dyan. It's either slide, uh, slander or libel. At yun ang nakakapag-overrule sa freedom of expression. If you are exercising it um, illegally na it may impact um, other people or yung kapwa mo citizen. Now, a citizen is any official member of a country. So us, tayo, mga Pilipino, we are, the, uh, we are citizens of the Philippines. And we are living on a country. A country with a government. A country with a politics. A country with a ruler. A country with uh, representatives na ating in-elect during election. Isa rin yun sa mga perks ng ano eh, ng um, democratic type of government at republican type of government that we are um, electing people who are gonna represent us to create law, to um, represent us onto the Senate, represent us onto the Congress, diba? Inelect natin sila. Niluklok natin sila. And just like what I've mentioned earlier, during election, we need to make sure that we are electing the right people. Kasi at the end of the day, ay naman natin magsisi. Diba? Now, who are the citizens? Or ano ba definition ng citizen at citizenship? A citizen is one who is a member of a state who was accorded with full civil and political rights subject to disqualifications provided by law and who is protected inside and outside of the state where he is a citizen. So us, just like us, we are citizens of the Philippines. We are a member of this country na meron tayong civil at political rights. We have the constitution. Subject to disqualification provided by the law, kapag nilabag natin ito, of course, syempre, pwede tayong makulong, makasuhan, and all. Who is protected inside and outside of the country? May sovereignty. May internal or external sovereignty. Dito sa Pilipinas, protected tayo ng law. Kapag kahit tayo nasa ibang bansa, o FW tayo, protected pa rin tayo ng Philippine law. Now, what is citizenship? It is a term signifying membership of a citizen in a political community. Since the state provides protection and security to its members, the members, on the other hand, have the reciprocal duty of allegiance to the state. So, um, it is our responsibility to follow what the law dictates us and what the law is um, providing unto us. Ba? Yes, the law is created by the citizens, but we need to make sure that, we need to realize that though it's created by the citizens, it's also for the citizens, for the protection of us. Hindi ito ginawa para sa ating ikapapahanap. But it is created for our own benefit, for our country's benefit, for our society's benefit. Now, who are the citizens of the Philippines? Now, according to Article 5, Section 1 of the 1987 Constitution, these are the citizens of the Philippines. Number one. Those who are citizens of the Philippines at the time of the adoption of 1987 Constitution. Number two, 
those who have mother and fathers na citizen daw ng Pilipinas. Those who were born before January 17, 1973 of Filipino mothers who elect Philippine citizenship upon reaching the age of majority and those who are naturalized in accordance with law. Okay, so um, based on the Constitution, dalawa lang daw ang type na citizenship kung ating kakategorize. So natural born at saka naturalized. Okay. Kapag natural born, of course, um, you have uh, parents na um, parehong Pilipino, dito ko pinanganak sa Pilipinas, it's natural born citizenship. Kapag naturalized, um, it's, a, um, it's a foreigner, for example, na nanirahan dito sa Pilipinas, who wants to be um, a Filipino citizen, so meron siyang legal procedures na susundin para ma-adapt niya yung pagiging Filipino citizenship. Um, this is very common sa mga basketball players in PBA who wants to be um, who wants to be Filipino citizen at makapaglaro dito sa Pilipinas at makapag-compete bearing the flag of the Philippines. Now, um, during the um, our elementary um, days, ay eh, napag-aralan natin yung juice and guineas, tsaka juice dosi, tsaka juice soli. Pero balikan nuin natin. Now, Juice and Guinness principle talks about relationship by blood. Or under this principle, relationship by blood is the foundation to acquire citizenship. Which means, a newly born child follows the citizenship of the parents. Yun ang Juice and Guinness. Kapag Juice Lossy naman or Juice Soli, a newly born child follows the citizenship of the state or the country where he was born irrespective of the citizenship of his parents. So, kapag just soli or just lossy, regardless kung anong citizenship ng parents mo, kung saan lugar or bansa ka pinanganak, yun ang iyo honor. Okay? So, that's for just lossy and just soli. Now, earlier, I have discussed the differences between natural born citizen and a naturalized um, Filipino citizen. So, as far as naturalization is concerned, it is a process or an act of formally adapting a foreigner into the political community of a state and giving him the rights and privileges of citizenship. So kapag ang isang natural bo or naturalized citizen ay naging Filipino citizen na, protected na siya ng Philippine law. Pinoy na siya. Kailangan niya nang sundin ang batas ng Pilipinas. Okay? Now, when a person is naturalized, he already renounced o pinapawalang visa na niya, gine-give up na niya ang kanyang former citizenship. Um, and acquiring natural naturalization ng citizenship, it's not as easy as it is. It takes a very, very long, maybe costly process bago mo ma-acquire yung nat pagiging naturalized citizen mo. Dito, lalo pa dito sa Pilipinas. Now, ano naman yung tinatawag na dual citizenship? Sir, allowed po ba ito? Yes, allowed naman ito. Um, allowed ito ng Philippine law at international law. It pertains to the possession of two citizenship by an individual that is or that of his original citizenship and the country kung saan siya nanggaling. This is very common kapag may mga kababayan tayo na nakatira sa ibang bansa at nakapangasawa ng um, foreigner. So they can apply for dual citizenship. Na? So ano naman yung dual allegiance? It refers to the continued allegiance of a naturalized citizen to his mother country even after acquiring Filipino citizenship. Now, this is very controversial kasi um, kapag dual allegiance, parang kasi hindi pa niya fully gine-give up yung kanyang loyalty or allegiance dun sa dati niyang or dun sa original niyang citizenship bago siya magpa-naturalize. Um, this is very critical, lalo pa halimbawa, um, pa um, papasok sa military or papasok sa, sa government service din sa Pilipinas. Medyo, di ba, nakakaduda o delikado kasi baka isip, pwede natin isipin na <coughs> can be conflicting na, na um, sinusuportahan pa niya yung previous citizenship niya tapos nagtatrabaho siya dito sa government dito sa atin. So medyo alanganin yun. Okay? Now, the Philippine government prohibits dual allegiance. Ayan, nire-restrict ng Philippine government according to Section 5, Article 4 of the 1987 Constitution. So, um, for the Philippine government, it's, um, it's either uh, magpa-naturalize ka or magpa-naturalize ka. 
at i-give up mo talaga yung previous citizenship mo. Okay. Kaya lang, do what allegiance is prohibited, however, may be regulated. So, may exception to the rule. Or restricted by Philippine law where it is conducive or could deal to do an allegiance. So, there may be um, instances na pwede namang may mga acts or actions na pwede i-allow um, ng Philippine government for a person na may dual allegiance. Kaya lang, kapag may mga Kapag, may mga, kapag those actions will question national interest, uh, halimbawa ay it can cause um, um, national safety, national security, or it can cause state of war, halimbawa, ay talagang hindi, hindi yan papayaki ng Philippine government. Okay. Now, self and politics. So, um, nakahighlight dito yung term na public opinion. Ayan. So, nabanggit ko nga kanina yung freedom of speech and expression. Huwag na tayo lumayo. Um, dito sa current na nangyayari sa ating government ngayon, a lot of people do have his or her own opinion. Uh, and wala problema doon because we are living in a democratic country. We're living in a free country where we have freedom of expression and um, speech. However, we need to make sure that those things that we are expressing, those things that we are opinionating should be um, valid and should not um, hurt the, um, the morale or should not ruin the reputation of other people. Uh, kasi sabi ko nga kanina, kahit mayroon tayong freedom of expression and speech, hindi yan absolute. There is a limitation. Pwede tayong makasuhan ng libel or slander. Let's just take ito, itong example ng nung nabalita na nagsabi daw ng bad words kay Senator Bongo. Oh, hindi mo naman pwedeng sabihin na, ay kasi may freedom of expression ako. Pero hindi eh. Nasira or paninira na reputation niya ni Senator Bongo. Kaya, he made an action na i-take legal actions for slander or libel case at ayon. We have um, the right to express our opinion. But we also need to make sure that it's not absolute. There should always be limitations. And not only on a political perspective, but on a um, personal perspective as well. Um, kapag nakikita tayo ng mga friends natin sa social media na wala na tayong ginawa kung hindi mag-rant, mag-reklamo, saying negative things about the government, tapos ikaw naman sa sarili mo, wala ka naman ginagawa rin para sa sarili mo, para mag-grow. Nisisi mo ang gobyerno kasi nagihirap ka, ganito, ganyan, pero hindi ka naman nagahat ng trabaho. Hey, wait lang. Diba? Mag-reflect din tayo. Ano bang ginagawa natin para mag-grow tayo as a person individually? Lagi ba natin iaasa to sa government? Diba? Which is very unfair kung lagi natin iaasa sa government. Kasi at the end of the day, oh, we, uh, we have our personal decisions to make and should not always depend all of the things that's happening to us to the government. Okay. And mapunta naman tayo about the Filipino culture and the different values that makes us different from others. Now, as Filipinos, on a positive note naman, I, we are very, um, kumbaga, ilagi tayong look after ng different countries and nations kasi we have different and distinct characteristics na very Pinoy lamang sa isang natin yan. Number one, a family orientation. Um, here sa Pilipinas, ay binavalue talaga natin ang family. Some countries at the age of 18 years old or kapag matured na, kailangan maging independent ka na. Kailangan di ka na nakatira sa bahay ng parents mo. Kailangan may sarili ka ng bahay. Ba? Parang, parang, meron ka na, parang dapat accountable ka na sa sarili mo. But here in the Philippines, kahit... 18, 20, 30 years old, kahit may asawa at anak ka na, nakatira ka pa rin sa, parents, sa bahay ng parents mo. Nakatira ka pa rin sa bahay ng lolo-lola mo. Kapag may family gathering, fiesta, new year, pasko, di ba? Sama-sama ang pamilya. Family reunion. That's how we put importance sa konsepto ng pamilya. Diba? Dito sa Pilipinas. Yan ang katuwa. Ang maraming tagaybang bansa na natutuwa sa kultura meron ay about our family. Next. Um, hospitality. It is how we show our warm, um, heartwarming generosity sa ating mga bisita. Example, o kapag uh, may uh, bisita tayo, 
next week time busy, kami na make sure natin ah, maglinis tayo, um, ilabas ang mga <laughs> bagong plato, mga bagong utensils, kapag piyastahan, o oh, maghanda na ma- ng maayos, o oh, i-welcome sa ganito, i-welcome sa ganyan. Diba? So, that's how hospitable we are. Kapag may, may kamag-anak, um, tapos limited lamang ang kwarto, ikaw, tutulog ka sa, sa economy area ng bahay, kahit sa sala ka matulog, basta komportable lamang yung mga bisita mo. Diba? So, ganun natin pinapahalagahan. That's how heartwarmingly generous we are to, to, to our visitors. And also, um, not only here in the Philippines na pinapractice natin yan, even in abroad, the friendliness that we're offering other people. Next, compassionate. So, yung ating simpatiya sa ibang tao. Perfect example dito is the Taal um, eruption itong nakaraan lamang around January, um, January, February months na yan. Diba? Kita-kita natin from different provinces, talagang tinraffic ang SDEX. Sabi nga nila, nakakatuwa daw yung traffic na yun kasi yun daw yung traffic dahil sa sobrang daming gustong tumulong. Mga relief. May to imagine, Batangas, tapos may mga nagdodonate. Galing Pampanga, Pangasinan, Tarlac, Galing Bicol. Diba? Kapag may mga bagyo na sa lanta, so magkakaroon ng donation fund or um, donation marathon. Diba? Para maipaabot lamang yung tulong. At how compassionate we are with other people. Industry and hard work, ang sipag. Um, kilala mga Filipino with being very hardworking, that's the reason why people or um, employers abroad do prefer Filipino workers or employees because they know how hardworking we are, especially on the healthcare field. Ba? Maraming Filipino nurses, caregivers, mga kababayan nating mga um, health workers outside the country ay talagang nahahire agad ng different countries or nationalities to take care of the people onto their country kasi they know the quality of the work that Filipinos can offer. It's not just work eh, but, but the compassion and the passion that we are giving to sa ating mga pinagsisilbihan, sa ating mga pinagtatrabahuhan and the loyalty of course. Next, spirit of kinship and camaraderie. Bayanihan. So, alam naman natin to. Ito, itong p- picture na to, ito yung pinaka-common natin nakikita ay eh, yung nagbubuhat ng bahay na sama-sama. Diba? Pero hindi lamang sa ganitong sitwasyon yung tukos sa bayanihan. Um, halimbawa ay sa, yun, pinaka-simple na lamang. Yung, um, halimbawa, nasiraan ng jeep. Diba? So, tulong-tulong na itutulak yung jeep para matulungan yung driver na mapaandar uli yun. Ha? What else? Um, yun, pagkatayo ng bahay. So, tulong-tulong mga magkakapit bahay para may tayo yung bahay ng kanilang kakompound. Diba? So, andun yung samahan sa katulungan. Ability to survive. Sa dinami-daming mga trahedya, um, sa dinami-dami ng mga calamities dito sa Pilipinas, ay uh, napapagtagumpay natin na survive natin because we are one. Tulong-tulong tayo. Sa Pilipinas ka nga din makakakita ng mga nasalantana ng mga ng bagyo tapos napaka-positive o nakakangiti pa. Diba? Example nga nito, yung sa Taal, yung maraming mga donations sa relief na dumating. Tapos um, para ma-boost yung happiness sa mga tao, nagkaroon ng fashion show sa mga donated na mga damit. Diba? Not, not for the sake of um, para laitin yung mga nag-donate. But just for them to boost at least their happiness and their morale. Diba? Um, and to prove na hindi itong taal na ito, hindi itong bagyong ito makakapagpabagsak sa amin bilang Pilipino. Faith and religiosity. Um, the perfect example that I can give to this ay nung nag-visit dito si Pope Francis at nagpunta siya sa, sa Visaya, sa Leyte. Um, tapos ay nagmisa siya doon na habang habang kasagsagan ng kalakasan ng bagyo at ulan. Talagang na-test talaga ang faith ng mga Pilipino noon. And um, Pope Francis was um, really, really, really happy. And um, talaga hinangaan niya. Hinangaan niya talaga ang faith ng mga Pilipino. Ang laki ng lakas ng bagyo at ulan. Pero sa mga Pilipino, hindi. Sisimba, sasamba pa rin kami. 
at hindi itong ulan na to makapagpatigil para makasimba kami at nakita namin si Pope Francis. At hindi lamang yung mga kapatid natin, hindi lamang yung mga katoliko, but also mga kapatid natin Muslim, very religious. Mga Christians, nating mga kababayan, mga Tawis or mga Buddhist nating kababayan. Basta Pilipino, lagi tayo nagpapahalaga sa religion. Prosesyon, mahal na araw, diba? Sunday Mass, regular church gatherings, we are giving much importance sa mga yan. Kasi faith in God or the faith in our Creator, whatever the religion that we have, um, should always be the foundation of everything and should always be at the center of everything that we do. Next ay pakikipagkapwa-tao. O, minsan nga, kahit hindi natin kakilala, o minsan maya-maya kakwentuhan na natin. Tawag natin, kuya, ate. O, ang tawag natin ay um, tito, tita. Diba? So, pakikisama. Lalo pat, um, halimbawa, pareho ko yung mga, halimbawa, pareho ko yung nasa ibang bansa, tapos mga balitaan mo, um, may, may bago kang nakilalang Pilipino, tapos kababayan mo pala taga Batangas. O, diba? So, nandun agad yung connection. Less discrimination. Dito sa Pilipinas, naniniwala naman ako na hindi tayo um, nagdi-discriminate eh, regardless of kung ang probinsya ka man ng gali. Kahit sabihin natin na, ay, ang um, taga-Visayas siya, huwag natin kaibiganin niya. No. No. Kung bagay, parang hindi, hindi youth character ng mga Pilipino. Maybe for some, but just very uh, minimal. Pero hindi, na, hindi natin pwede sabihin na, na that's an identity of a Pinoy na nagdi-discriminate. Joy and humor na sa lahat ng pagkakataon nandiyan ang saya at ligaya ng mga Pinoy. Um, Iko-correlate ko siya doon sa example ko kanina na during the Taal season, nagawa pa rin ngumiti ng mga Pilipino. During the Bagyo season, Lindol season, gagawa pa rin ngumiti ng mga Pilipino. Ito, siguro picture na ito, di ba? Manny Pacquiao fight siguro yan. Diba? Sama-samang sasaya at sama-samang um, magulungpot, pero Nandun pa rin din ang saya at babalik din sa saya. Okay. Flexibility, adaptability, and creativity. Kahit saan mo dalhin mga Pilipino, kayang-kaya yan. Um, example dito, siguro, uh, sa mga call centers. Uh, Filipinos are one of the largest number of, um, biggest number of um, English-speaking um, citizens in a country. And we are very flexible kung anong ipagawa sa atin. We can adapt easily. Kahit saan tayo dalhin, kaya-kaya natin gawin. And we are very creative and innovative na a simple thing, a simple task, a simple activity, we can make it creative, we can make it more innovative, we can make it more functional. That's how good Filipinos are. Hindi tayo nagsasettle sa tamang sapat lamang eh. We want to gain more for the better. We want to achieve more for the better. We want to innovate more for the better. Okay. On the concept naman na, ng adaptability, if we are working on this on, on a different country, um, siguro makaramdam ka ng home, sige, pero eventually, ma, ma-adapt mo rin ang, yung living doon. Ma-adapt mo rin yung culture doon. Ma-adapt mo rin yung language doon. Lalo pa ngayon with the help of technology, medyo nakakaiwas-iwas na tayo sa homesick kasi may, may video call na tayong tinatawag, di ba? Pero for the Filipinos, easy lang yan. pag adapt And, of course, flexibility. And that's it for our lesson about political self and uh, Filipino values. Um, please be advised that the lecture for this topic ay naka-upload po sa ating LMS. And I also provided some suggested readings and suggested videos that you guys can watch. Okay. In conclusion, um, us, um, human being, we are political animal. Hindi natin kayang mamuhay sa isang society na walang, na walang law, na walang order, na walang government, walang namumuno, at uh, walang pinamumunuan. Maybe... It's possible, but it will be very, very, very difficult for us to survive without the existence of uh, sa mga nabanggit ko. We have discussed the concept of citizen and citizenship, what is a Filipino citizen, and the importance of democracy, or what, uh, and the definition of democracy itself. We have uh, discussed um, the different uh, factors which influences, or the different um, 
um, categories for you to be considered as a Filipino citizen. The difference of a natural born and naturalized citizen, the jus lossi and jus soli, and more importantly, the different Filipino values that makes us distinct from other nations or from other citizens of other countries. Okay, so uh, that's it for today's um, discussion or discussion for this particular topic. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to send me a message via LMS or via Facebook Messenger uh, for me to be able to address your concern. Again, this is Sir Ken from the College of Arts and Sciences Psychology Department. Have a nice day to everyone.